The flowers around me, their beauty, their crowning achievement. But they hide, like me, shaking from the sunsets, receding, drowning, begging to feel. No one grows up and goes on believing that the lie that their beauty they hold is real. So alone, life is my prison. Living for nothing, nowhere to grow. Stalled and four-cornered with limits, I've been tempted by my thoughts of suicide, my escape plan envisioned. I'm reduced to the danger of cliches, jumping. Think how fast the ground meets my face, how easy it'll break blank, my body dumping, dead on impact. Red spray plays, glistening, streams of me oozing on the pavement. Lumps of my skin broken, ricocheting, I can't. This will replay in my mom's nightmares and daydreams, finding my bold act of power, taking my life a selfish, unfair act of a coward with no self-esteem. A knife is an easy way to go. The only pain I can control cleanly, drain the self-hatred and shame from me, take it, press down harder. What if I misplace it, my vein the target, the main artery cut myself and only feel shame. Why not go in my sleep? Numb me over to abbreviate time? Why not alleviate my mind with the drugs prescribed to help me erase the prominent progression of a deep set depression inside? Why don't I love myself? Where's the beauty in me? Why isn't my life worth living and why am I permanently fixing a problem that's temporary? Why can't I accept the fact that I was born like the flowers, born rare, born free? Hey guys, I'm Tiana Woods and I'm the Vice President of the Freedom Organization and I'm going to share with you my story and why I am so dedicated to what this organization stands for. When I was young, from the age of 6 to 12, I was molested and raped and during that time it was so dark that I thought that the only way for me to be happy was for me to kill myself. I popped pills and I cut myself but nothing really worked. It was to the point where I felt as though that the pain that I was causing myself was much more damaging than the pain that I have actually went through. So I came to I came to my senses and and stopped it. And I figured that it's better for me to still be here today, able to tell kids my story and how I survived everything. Because I figured that that would be the best way for, for them to see that there's always light at the end of your tunnel. No matter what you go through, there is, no, there is no need for you to kill yourself because there's therapy and there's counseling and there are friends that you can always confide in. And also, there's us. We no longer want children to have to think that because I'm this way or that way that I have to leave this world. No, we want you guys to grow up strong and to grow up knowing that without a doubt you are perfect and that one day you can be like me and strive and be beautiful and be wonderful at anything it is that you plan to do with your life. So just know that suicide is not the answer. The, the answer is seeing your life through. The answer is being happy and accepting who you truly are. Hi, how are you? My name is Stavetta and I'm the founder and the CEO of the Freedom Organization. Before you, I'm going to, well right now I'm sitting before you and I'm going to tell you two stories, uh, one being a personal story of my own and another one being why this organization actually got started. I just came out to my mother at the age of 19, I'm going to say. It was, real, it was more so of a, of a forceful come out. Um, she had my cell phone one day and my girlfriend at the time texted me and her being newsy saw it and went through my phone and one thing led to another. I ended up running away from home because of that. Now, my mother is a minister, so is my father. 
So of course, homosexuality is just forbidden in my household. Um, when I did run away, of course I came back home. Things still wasn't going too well. I left once again, came back home. Thought everything would be okay. And things just got worse, sadly, so I left. And the last time, the third time that I left, it was like I wasn't turning back, it was, that was just it. And to this day, me and my mother aren't talking. We are not on, on speaking terms right now. Um, and I definitely understand what a lot of kids are going through, especially those who have parents who are embedded within the church. You know, you have ministers, you have pastors, so I definitely know what you're going through. It's, it's a hard thing, it really is. It's, 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 it's a really hard thing to come out to your parents, especially those who are so religion-based. Now, of course, with this story, I it stuck with me, and until this day, it, it still sticks with me every day. I wake up thinking about it. I go to sleep thinking about it. And because of that, I had to start something up. And this is how the Freedom Organization came about. Our mission is to positively advise and counsel the youth of the LBGTQ community. And we do all of this through videos, campaigns, and movements. I just wanna let all of you, all of you who are out there, to know that, listen, it, it's hard right now. I know it is. I know you are going through a struggle but you will come out strong. You will, you just have to hold on, you have to stay strong. And in this, you, you will grow. And as you grow, you'll become free. And that's how you gain your freedom.